Welcome to the Cool Fireman Podcast, a virtual firehouse kitchen table with What's a Rolfi, Unky, Fireman 1231, JDB Cubed, and Fireman Freddy. Let's get to the show. What is up, boys? Welcome back. Cool man, cool fireman podcast. Here we are. How is everybody? We are Doing here. good. Doing well. Oh, that's an overwhelming good. Okay, good. Hey, uh, today's episode, we're talking about uh, mm-hmm. the illustrious waking up after midnight. We all love doing it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they say that it's not good for our health. It's one reason why we have heart problems in the fire service is because we wake up and... Uh, you know, our heart basically goes from 40 beats a minute to 140 beats a minute in about three seconds. And I don't know about you guys, but it all depends on a, like my mood, you know, or what I ate that night or whatever, how, you know, how tired I am. But when I'm really tired and I go to bed and I wake up within, I wouldn't even say after midnight, I would just say within like the hour of me falling asleep, that's the worst time to get a call is like yeah. right like within the hour of you going to sleep. And the reason I know that is just because I'll wake up and you think it's, you know, four or five in the morning, but it's only 11 at night. Right. And you don't even know where you're at. There's been a number of times where I'll sit up and then I'll, I'll even lay back down and be like, no, that's not for, you know, like that's not a call. (laughs) And then I'll wait. But in the back of your mind, there's like a little thing, you know, there's a little guy on your shoulder going, Hey, you got a call. You gotta come in, you know. Um, very few hey, times hey, that's for you, dummy. I ever slept through a call, to be honest with you. I mean, it happens to the best of us where you get the yo, dude, yeah. get up, we got a call, you know. Um, that happened to a, a probationary firefighter when I was downtown one time. We got crushed during the day and he was passed out and didn't wake up. We were sitting on the engine waiting. We're like, where the heck's so and so? Anyways, waking up after midnight, waking up after you go to bed for a call. For the birds, dude. For the birds. In fact, when I before I became a firefighter, I worked on the ambulance. And so I got a good dose of, you know, running a lot of calls, waking up after midnight. And I just remember one time, it was like four in the morning. It was probably like our fifth call after I went to bed. And I'm staring up at the stars and I'm just like, do I want to do this for 30 more years? <laughs> you know, I, mean, <laughs> I almost had like a come to Jesus moment where I was just like, okay. Here's like the fork in the road, Rolf, you know, do, do I want to do this? And it, it, it sounds silly, right? The best job in the world, you're going to give up just so you don't have to wake up after midnight, but that's how brutal it is. But I got to admit that I'm sure people are going to find out somehow where I work, but we're not super busy and we do get a fair amount of sleep after midnight. So I apologize if you guys get up more than that. So what's your guys, uh, Doug, you get up, uh, I know you get up a lot. Yeah. Um, for the last Three years I've been assigned at the current house I'm at now, and we have the business engine for the last several years in the department um, because we only have a daytime ambulance at my station. We Monday through Friday, 0800 to 1800 is when our ambulance is marked up. And then after that, there's a volunteer house that's right next door to my house. Um, the volunteer ambulance will run. And if it's an ALS call, the engine goes with them if they're an ambulance. If they're not, they don't have a paramedic on the unit, so we have to chase them. So, yeah, business engine in the, in the county is we get up a lot. Yeah. unfortunately yeah how about you boys so uh i've been i've been a part of two departments uh in these last few years made a change uh, <clears throat> two years ago my first department uh it was very uncommon that we slept through the night uh, we were a little bit busier with medicals and uh i have a <laughs> a fond memory when i had just i think i maybe had eight months on maybe a year and we had what was called night watch and uh in the watch room downstairs we had a murphy bed and at 10 o'clock whoever whoever had the night watch was allowed to kick anybody out of the watch room uh at 10 o'clock because it was time for you to take your your night watch you went from 10 p.m to 7 a.m and uh didn't matter didn't matter rank didn't matter seniority if uh you had night watch you're ready to go to bed you kick them out of there and uh, a lot of guys would set up the bed different ways. I used to set it up right by the computer. I'd put the phone right next to the bed. At the time, we had what was called a ring down. Phone would ring. It would set off alarms through the whole station. Whoever picked it up, it would open up a PA in that station so you could hear uh, what the call was. You could 
figure it out. Well, uh, being a young, young buck at the time and new to the fire service, for whatever reason, when you're really tired and uh, haven't gotten a lot of sleep, I had a new kid at the time, um, your mind convinces you of things that maybe aren't true. So <laughs> I was laying there, counting my sheep, fast asleep, the ring down came down, and my brain convinced me that we only had to go on every other call that came in. And this was the other one. So I just laid there and let the phone ring. And then you my turn. The, and then you hear the you hear the captain. Oh. Oh no. Oh no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so that was that was a uh, that was a day you don't live down. And from that point on, man, that that ring that ring down comes on. Or now at my new department, we have the heart saver tones. So it's and then we have red lights at both stations that come on. They used to be white lights, which was like super aggressive. So now the red lights kind of wakes you up very gently. And most of the time now, if the call comes out, I, I sit up, start putting my pants on start getting ready and if it's not for us if the address if it's not our address then lay back down but uh i've noticed personally that uh anytime <laughs> anytime in the middle of the night that the tones go out you have that uh rescue induced urination i don't know if anybody <laughs> yeah. has ever <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> <clears throat> But you never, you know, you never succumb to the urge, right? I mean, you actually run the call, having to go pee, right? You don't <laughs> pee and then get on the engine, right? Uh, no, you got, you got to get your response times, yeah, right? Yeah, got to at the shoot times. Punk, you get up. Oh yeah, we get up in my current department. So when we go to, we go to bed and everything, <clears throat> we have white lights and the heart destroyer alarm alarms go off. The loudest they are. They are so loud as the lights are like somebody flipped a switch in New York, the brightest oh. it can be. And it's loud. So it's been plenty of times I have woken up and hit the wall. If I'm in the wrong, if I'm not in my normal room, you can get up on the wrong side of the bed. You're all used to getting off yeah. one side, <clears throat> but yeah, we run in the middle mm -hmm. of the night and there's been plenty of times where either we get a call at 11 o'clock and then everybody's looking at their watch. It's six 45 in the morning. We're, Where's our relief? How, how are we swapping out here? Um, we've had those, just like Matt was saying, the ones I hate the most. You go run a call and come back. Might take you a while to fall asleep. Me, it takes me a good while to fall asleep. And make sure a call goes out within 20, 30 minutes. You can put your head down and you're up again. I just Most of the time, I just stay up because I get insomnia real bad. So sometimes we get a call and we're back at 1230 at night. I just stay up. I can't fall back asleep because by the time I fall back asleep at six o'clock, six 30, when you're supposed to be get up anyways. No, but in my old I'll be, <clears throat> the alligator what? death roll. Death roll. <laughs> yeah. The alligator death roll where you just sit there and toss and turn. All right, we call that the rescue rollover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Unky, that's a good point. You said sometimes you stay up. Personally, I have a little internal thing of if I can get to sleep for an hour, I'll take it. So if we get back at four, five, whatever, if I can get an hour before it's, I usually get up at seven. We have to be up by seven thirty. Um, what do you guys have a, a number of? Look, if I can get this much sleep, I'll go back to sleep. If it's within a certain time frame. No, not um, for me. I clearly, you stay up. Yeah. You start count. You start counting the minutes. If I fall asleep right now, I can get forty-two more minutes of sleep. I can sleep for about fifteen to fifteen minutes to an hour, and I'm wide awake for six hours. We have shift change at seven. So that's a little different. I feel like yeah, guys, ours is at eight. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. So even, even around us, it's weird. Seven. Everybody thinks that's, that's interesting that we have shift changes seven, but anyway, so what I was getting as I'd rather we, do it. At we seven. get a call at like five. We're back at six. You know, I typically get up at six, six, six thirty. So, but, uh, uh, my favorite thing though is you know you just turn whatever lemons into lemonade. If you get those calls and you're getting crushed, then we hit Starbucks. As long as it's after like four a.m., we'll just stroll into Starbucks. You know, just like you know, they pretty much already know they're going to get the strongest coffee they can find. So that's kind of a nice thing to do. But 
I was working the ambulance before I got hired. Um, and uh, I was working with this guy who's actually a fireman now too. And uh, I get out in the ambulance. I'm like, where is this guy? And uh, he, he comes out and I look in the rear view mirror and he looks dazed. I mean, he's just like doing this, like this sway and he's got his underwear on over his pants. <laughs> How is that possible? Uh, dude, Does somehow, he sleep in he naked? Up, he must sleep naked. I don't know. <laughs> somehow his underwear were on top of his pants. And I'm, you know, I worked for a private ambulance company. And it's like, dude, like you go 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 or you don't don't you know they fire you yeah uh, no 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 i'm like dude let's go you know he had to run back in and change his pants dude so when when y'all get back into the firehouse here's something that happens overnight the report first off who does the report for the call let's say it was just a you're the first new truck to fire alarm who does the reports in your station mine is the driver Mm, front seat unless they unless they dole it out the officer at your station. If, if we, if sorry, if we run a medical, uh, if it's an engine and ambulance dispatch, whoever does the PCR will do the fire report as well. Yeah. If it's just if it's just a fire response, whoever's in the front seat, unless they um, delegate it elsewhere. All right. Yeah. We or when it comes to medical, the ambulance company takes care of both yeah. reports. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same here. So, so if it's just like a a, a fire alarm, you're the first do. So your truck company, your your station is responsible for that report. So who does it at your firehouse, Fred? Uh, so for us, we have, you know, the, the end first report. And then if it's a medical, you have the PCR. So the, the right seat, uh, actually we switch every call, but it's the right seat person on the ambulance. will do the, uh, the PCR and then come back. And it's usually the driver that does the end first report kind of okay. as like a, you don't get stuck yeah. doing everything. If it ends up being like a a fire alarm or a CO call or something like that, uh, then it's the officer of the squad or the engine that ends up doing the report. Uh, Matt, about, just, about, oh, sorry. Just because of the amount of information that has to go into it. Uh, I'll get to I'll get to the reason why, Matt. Yeah, uh, our officer. So if if we have like a car accident at TC. And there's two engines. It's the first in engines uh, captain that that takes care of the. Our captains do all of our Enfers reporting and all. Uh, and anybody that doesn't know what Enfers is, I think it's what National Fire Incident Record Record System Records <laughs> System. But yeah, Enfers is oh, how reporting. We I think it's reporting calls nationwide yeah. or whatever. Um, but it's just a report that says you know what you okay. did, and where you went, and all that. But uh-huh. yeah, the captain. Our National officer Fire doesn't... Incident Reporting System. Ooh. Google. Google. GTS. <laughs> yes, baby. GTS for life. In our in our fire department, the, the officer only does it if it's a significant event. And however you want to categorize it, you know, a work and fire, a death, significant loss in any way. So, but the reason why I got to this is prime example, I'm in a single engine company house. We cross staff an ambulance. So if we go out, we're responsible for the report. It's usually the driver. Does do you do you stay up with the crew, or do you go to sleep? And at our house, we got a lot of senior guys, so we'll just tell them, "Hey, go to bed." And I always been told the rookie, "You stay up." So when we have a young guy in the house, your your butt should be staying up with that guy doing the report. If you're not doing it, you're sitting there with him. <laughs> you're hanging out with him. Why you do it? So, do y'all do anything like that in the middle of the night with the new guys? We ain't doing reports in the middle of the night. Okay. No, yeah, exactly. I'm I'm with Matt. Um, to touch on what Freddie said, same thing. If we run a medical from the ambulance, the driver, whoever doesn't take the patient, will do the fire report. Um, but same thing with Matt. If I if I get up twice and have to ride in with the volunteers as a paramedic, I'm again. I get up at seven every morning. I don't take that long to do PCRs. I don't understand how people take 45, 50, you know, 50 minutes, an hour to do a PCR. I've never understood that. Um, I'll get up and do all mine in the morning. I don't do them in the middle of the night. I'll, I'll come back and go to bed and I'll do it when I get up. Yeah. And people that don't know PCR is patient care report. So we have to do a report on any patient that we do basically has a chief complaint Yeah, as a paramedic or even as an EMT really, but any patient way. contact. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Any patient contact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
so that's that's a it, it brings up an interesting point, Unky, that that made me think is uh, uh, you know, with your rookies and and <clears throat> you know we had we had the tip last episode of you know going to bed last, and getting up first, <laughs> and a, as a as a pro be as a rookie, you are expected to be kind of you know when you get on shift, you're working. And you're working, you're the first one doing something, last one doing something, first last one to bed, first one up. Um, do you guys have any type of of uh first off, do you have any type of nap time that's that's kind of uh, granted to you during the day? And and kind of on top of that is do you have a a time during the day where you tell your rookies, like, hey, all right, you're good. Mm-hmm. Go go sit down for a minute. Cause I know, at least in my two departments that I've been a part of, it was drastically um, different. Whereas uh, my first department, uh, when you got in in the morning as a probie, uh, your first job was to make sure there's coffee made. If you were coming on shift, make sure coffee is made. And then your butt is in the ambulance because we are seniority trucks. So you were you rode the ambulance in the right seat doing all the reports as a rookie until you had somebody underneath you that you were on the truck with and you could bump around station to station and what have you. So your job uh, on that department was get in the truck, learn the truck, check out the truck, make sure it's good to go. And then after that, start hitting the house chores. And for us around uh, seven o'clock, right after dinner, uh, we, we told you you're, you're off duty as, as a probie, like, Hey, Sit down. You can come mm. sit in the watch room. You can go make your rack. You can, you know, do whatever you need. Make your phone calls because obviously you don't want somebody sitting there uh, on their phone all day <clears throat> talking mm. to their wife or what have you. But uh, outside of that, uh, you know, my new department's a little more structured and uh, the way that they do things. And for for the new department, you you have to be up until kind of everybody else goes to bed mm-hmm. they they take the uh last to bed kind of kind of seriously you know 10 o'clock is kind of your off time if you're a probie and and uh it brings up a lot of conversations about like sleep deprivation and such because you know you're our, our shift change changes eight uh but you are expected as a probie to be up at 6 30 empty the dishwasher um uh, make the coffee grab all the garbages and take them out for the oncoming uh, crew that doesn't have to, you know, do a whole bunch of stuff. And then, uh, you know, you can't go to bed till, till 10 PM without a nap uh, in the middle of the day. It kind of, it, it's, it's a long year that wears on you. So I'm interested what happens uh, in different departments. I'll say this one first. <clears throat> um, first off, when I first started being a firefighter, I was with the city. And the city was 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And my brother's with that city now. And he says it's still pretty much 10 p.m. is bedtime. That's when your work day is done. Um, but that's when you can take a nap. When I was there, if you were, we call them red shirts. You know, out of academy, your rookies, your probies, all that, whatever you want to call them. From 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., you were up no matter what. Your very senior guys, they would go take a nap before dinner time. Around dinner time, the probie needs to be in the kitchen, helping out, working with the food, or just hanging out, so everybody else can take a nap that wanted to. And now, in my department that I am now, we used to have a battalion chief that go around and tell everybody, you know, your lunchtime is your lunchtime. Usually about twelve, eleven thirty to twelve thirty to maybe one o'clock. You can get something to eat, and he said, "Go take a safety nap." And we always thought he was joking. He's like, "No," because I need you to take that nap. So you can be on your game. You do whatever you want in your lunchtime. He says, he says, I do it. Everybody gets groggy after, you know, a big meal. So sometimes people take it during the lunchtime, but our official downtime is after eight hours. So at three o'clock, three 30, we're allowed to go into our PT shorts, go to the gym. Oh. It's now into your downtime. So we can do for the most part, whatever you want after three o'clock, as long as we don't miss the calls. And, uh, like the big tip I was want to bring up uh, about sleep deprivation and uh, jobs. Um, when you come in the firehouse, it's just not just, just the rookie. It's everybody. If you got something going on, you need to let your officer know. 
be that you got problems in your marriage, your kid kept you up all night long, you're just not feeling well, you know, even if you, know, you shouldn't, but you know, if you and I have a bender the night before, you know, you stayed up late or whatever, you're a little groggy, let your officer know because you have to be on your game. He needs you, the officer needs you to be on your game. So if he needs, he knows that you have a problem, like you've been up all the night with the babies and stuff, he's not going to, he's going to make sure you sit in the right seat, the correct seat where he knows what he can, can get out of you. You're not going to be the lead guy, the running around the house kind of person. So uh, my little advice. Yeah. I mean, I think everything that we're talking about comes back to the big C word culture. Mm-hmm. And we could probably have an entire podcast talking about, fire department culture and tradition. And it's because it's funny sitting here listening to you guys, you know, like we, we have our way of doing things in, in uh, where I work. And, and funny uh, helmets. We're like a 12 to and two. Funny helmets. Huh? And funny yeah. helmets. Funny helmets. Funny helmets. Yeah. But uh, we are like a 12 to two safety nap. Uh, we get in our fat pants at five o'clock. Um, and we, you know, that's kind of our time to cook dinner and do whatever, if we want to have a workout or whatever. Um, but yeah, 12 to two, I think it's massively important. And I think you guys are all the same. Uh, it's in my opinion that a good captain would even let, you know, a probationary guy, Hey, why don't you just go into the other room away from everybody and, you know, just study, you know, but if that's downtime, you know, 12 to two after lunch, you just had a big lunch. Typically it's like, dude, just go take it, take it easy. And then we'll hit it hard for some more training at three, whatever it is. So, um, but yeah, I mean, there's guys out there, you know, I'm sure there's guys watching right now. They're just like, no way, you know, hammer, hammer, you know, stay up, you know, it's just like, dude, why, you know? So, but that's just my opinion. I had an awesome captain when I was on uh probation. Um, my, my first department, I, I got hired September 15th of 2010 we had my son April of 2011. So I had like six months on seven months on when, when we had our, our baby. So tired at work, tired at home, tired when I was sleeping. And uh, I remember one day on shift, I was sitting out in the apparatus bay. We had a desk that was kind of over by the hose tower and uh, it had like the binders and stuff for SOPs and whatever. And that was back. (laughs) That was back when you were issued a paper map uh, when you first hired on and you had to learn your streets and you had to highlight them and know all the address breaks and what what have you. And I can just remember uh, vividly being on the apparatus desk doing this and just being like half asleep. And a captain walked up to me and he goes, Hey, Freddie, you look like you could use a workout. Cap, I'm good, man. I don't, I don't want to go work out. I said, I'm just going to study my map here. He's like, I think you need to come upstairs with me. We're going to go work out. Meet me in the weight room, 15 minutes. And I was like, man, I don't want to do this. Like I'm exhausted. I, I haven't slept in like three days. This is horrible. So, uh, go upstairs. He walks in about two minutes later. He's got two pillows. And a couple of the like hospital blankets or whatever. And he throws two five pound weights on the bench, on the bench press machine. And he puts a a pillow and a blanket on there. He said, lay down. I'll come back for you in an hour. If anybody asks what you're doing, tell them you're lifting weights. I said, are you sure? Am I in charge? Yeah. yeah. Said, then I'm sure. He said, you're Is this useless a test? To- <laughs> he goes, you're useless to me if you're half asleep trying to trying to do patient care. I said, I appreciate it, Cap. So I laid down. And the next thing I remember was uh, one of the dudes coming in about two and a half hours later to literally work out. But he's like, what are you doing in here? Uh, working out. I had a senior guy to do that. He would go into the gym on purpose to nap all day. And he would be under like some kind of ab cruncher. So when you flung over the door, it made a lot of noise. And he just sit up with the ab cruncher. <laughs> Well, that's a good officer right there. Getting, yeah. Taking care of your crew. Yeah. I, my take on it is, you know, like uh, all, all you've already addressed it. Um, we start shift at eight o'clock and dinner time is pretty much our knockoff time. We don't have a short pants time or a fat pants time. Unfortunately, unless you're doing PT, you're expected to be in your station uniform. 
Um, there are some places that are a little more lax on that, and that comes down to each individual officer and and or battalion chief. Depending. All my pants are fat pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as far as naps go, um, we again back to the c word. Um, you, you hear the older guys that you know when they were on the department, they ran a thousand calls a year. You know, like oh well, we got this and that and this and that. Well, you know what? We're running fifty thousand calls a year now. Like we're getting our our bag smashed a lot. Um, we are becoming more and more, we did a, uh, fatigue, we have a fatigue management work group. We just did a pretty big study on, on sleep deprivation and that kind of stuff. So we are starting to come into the own of, look, it's okay to nap at work guys. Don't sleep all day. Obviously we have things to do, but you know, after you get your morning stuff done, usually, usually it's after lunch because you, you know, you're checking the rigs in the morning. You're, you're doing some, your, your everyday station duties of, of station maintenance, checking the generator, whatever it is for that day, cleaning the showers, whatever. Um, and usually by that time it's, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Well, then you got to go to the store and get lunch, uh, and get your meals and get them prayers. So it's usually after lunch. So the one to three to one to four is kind of a thing for us. Um, just let your officer know, Hey, look, Hey boss, I'm going to get a nap. All right, cool, man, whatever. You know, everybody's pretty much becoming more open to it and understanding of like Freddie just said, look, if you're tired and you're groggy, you know, we've all seen the, the, the reports about how drowsy driving is, is just as impairing as, as drunk driving. So it, that's a thing. I mean, we, we're driving a, a, a 40 to 80, 90,000 pound apparatus, depending on what you're driving down the street with lights and sirens sometimes. And if you're drowsy, that's a that's a recipe for disaster. Mm-hmm. So we're getting more and more abreast of and 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 OK with look, man, when the chief comes around, if a guy's napping, so what, man, the guy's tired again, Freddie, he might have something going on at home. Let your officer know. Whoever's in charge that day, hey boss, I got this, I got that. I didn't get no sleep last night. I got a sick kid at home. I came in because I'm not sick. My wife's at home with the kid, but the kids kept me up. Whatever. It's all about communication. Another good C word. So we're getting more in tune with that. As far as the rookie goes, yeah, six o'clock is our dinner time. You know, we're pretty twelve o'clock, six o'clock is when you eat. You know, after supper, all right, man, you're on your own. I, I expect you if you've got some uh, modules in your development stuff to do have those done. But eight o'clock was always my cutoff time when I was a rookie and every rookie I've had since 8 PM, you're on your own, man. This is your time. Do what you want during the day. If you need a nap, get it. But we've got training. We've got to accomplish. You've got, you know, checklist of things that you have to do by a certain time. And this month, that month, this month, you know, you got to do these things. Um, yes. First thing in the morning, get, get the bath mats washed, fill the cool with ice, have the coffee done, trash. If it needs to be done, check the rig out, get the chores done. And, you know, yep. I see. yeah. So just All like right. everybody else, I mean. Well, a couple of good C words that we threw out today. Uh, good C words. We, we solved yeah. the world's problems on. <laughs> more more we than four the world's problems on uh, what it's like to get up, up after midnight. Uh, good stuff. Um, <clears throat> a quick recipe from me. Uh, what's up? Nothing. I was oh, just pointing at you. Quick, Quick recipe for me, my chicken pot pie. I love making my chicken pot pie uh, at, at the firehouse, especially when it's cold out. A little uh, uh, comfort food. I use biscuits on the top uh, as the mm. topper, and then uh, I have my pie crust on the bottom. It's amazing. That's uh, drool. It's a quick, huh? That's drool. That's drool. It I'm is hungry. good. It, it's really good. It uh, like- I call it schnooky pie. Uh, Does it slap? Oh. Huh? It's a slap. Does it slap? Oh, it slaps. Oh, okay. Snooky pie. I don't Snooki know if you can be. I was on. I was on the ambulance, and uh, I was brand new, and um, working for the county on their box, whatever. <clears throat> and they go, "Hey, you know how to cook?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." You know, I lied. And uh, they go, "What are you going to cook?" And I was like, uh, "Pot pie." And they're like, "Pot pie?" Like, oh, okay, like we could do some pot pie. Like you've ever made it before? And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> absolutely." So I get GTS. on, I, I text Kelsey and I say, Hey, can you send me that pot pie recipe from your mom? I need to try to make it. So she writes this email thing. She goes, Hey, Schnooky, here you go. Um, <laughs> here it is. Right? I print this thing out and that ambulance, we were busy, dude, 15, 20 calls a day. And oh. so I get it out. We go shopping, grab the stuff, bring it back. And I put the, the thing down, the uh, paper down and I didn't even think about it. And bing, 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 call goes out. Engine comes in, says, hey, what do we need to do? And I go, I don't know. Just start chopping up this, that, and the other. We get back and they go, hey, um, hey, Schnooky, can you pass the salt? <laughs> and I'm nice. going, what? And they're like, hey, Schnooky, can you pass the, the pepper over there? 
and and do they just start losing it and they throw the piece of paper at me and they're like schnooky huh and i'm like reading it i'm like oh my god she's never called me schnooky in my life so anyway that's the best you know, way that nicknames come around high. the organic way is the best way oh mm-hmm. dude 100 percent. yeah all right who's uh whose rookie tip is it today yeah, all right um, got yes so you know because it's me it's gonna be about food <laughs> so, so my rookie tip for everybody is though you may be a good cook don't volunteer to cook until you're asked or rotated in make sure your meals are on time make sure it's hot and make sure it's a lot the old the old saying of keeping them waiting long enough they'll eat anything doesn't apply at all in the firehouse be the last one to serve your plate don't load up on your first plate and wait to go second wait wait for your seconds you Solid. guys ever notice that the plates in a firehouse are like the size of a <laughs> freaking gigantic platters? All right. Awesome. Very good. That's uh, that's our podcast. Way to go. I think uh, it's time for what? Shift change? Is that what we got to do? We're yeah, we're coming up. <laughs> yeah, that's how we're going to say it. I uh, think it's uh, <laughs> time for. Uh... Yeah, it's, t- it's about time. All right. Time you want to do that change, again? Is truck. that what you can do it? Is you can do it again? I don't know, I don't know what I. I don't know. I just say, hey, it looks like hey. it's time for shift sh- shift change. Yeah, hey, that shift change, whatever. And then say something after it that you do during your shift change. We leave. All right. <laughs> so hey, you know what you should do is hey, it looks time it looks uh it uh looks like it's time for shift change. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. I think we're good.